Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Next on Hiki no, stories from across the island chain. Students on Hawaii Island are working on a once-in-a-lifetime science project that's headed to the moon. Meet a McKinley High School cross-country runner on Oahu and learn about his story of perseverance. Also, we visit a popular arts, food, and music festival on Kauai. The students of Wheeler Middle School on Oahu teach us internet safety. Plus, we visit an exotic dragon fruit farm on the island of Maui. We go behind the scenes with the Iolani hackers on Oahu as they create elaborate visual pranks. And we meet a young woman from Oahu who aims for the top in air riflery despite her medical condition. All on this episode of Hiki No, coming to you from Island School on Kauai, home of the Voyagers. That's next on the nation's first statewide student news network, Hiki No. Can do. We're here at Island School on the island of Kauai in the Moku Apuna. A moku, or district, is a structure of land division created during the 9th century by the Hawaiians. Did you know the moku system was developed to sustain the natural ecosystem and environment of Hawaii? Each moku was designed specifically to help balance land and ocean resources needed to sustain healthy, thriving communities and the ecosystem. Kauai and Ni'ihau are divided into six mokus, Kona, Puna, Nepali, Ko'olau, Halelea, and Ni'ihau. In this episode of Hiki no, we will explore all the mokus of Kauai and Ni'ihau. Our first story takes us to Hawaii Island, where Keala Kehe High School brings us a story about students from their school, as well as from Iolani School, who are participating in a once-in-a-lifetime science project. On the slopes of Mount Akea, students from Kealakea and Iolani high schools are testing lunar dust shields on student-made mock landers in a simulated mission to the moon. One of the greatest things that we did this year was um, a testing that we did up on the mountain. And so I guess the real world aspect of it really comes to life when we're doing these things with all of the really crazily important and amazing people like Rob Kelso. So for the test today, uh, so we can get the photo analysis that we need and that's our goal. Rob Kelso, formerly a NASA shuttle flight director and now the executive director of the Pacific International Space Center for Exploration Systems or PISCES, works with students through a program called Moon Riders, which stands for Research Investigating Dust Expulsion and Removal Systems. To mitigate the harmful effects of lunar dust on space equipment and astronaut suits, students test the validity of the Electrodynamic Dust Shield, or EDS. Their research is then shared with partners such as Google Lunar X Prize, NASA, and Pisces. These people from different organizations, NASA Kennedy, Pisces, Iolani, that are working in different places at different speeds and producing different levels of work. And so being able to kind of incorporate everything as well as what we're doing has been a big challenge. So this is the very first time that I've been able to experience a project in which the work that I'm doing is actually capable of changing the future of how society runs and possibly giving us the ability to make a colony on the moon, you know, it's a big thing for me to be able to say. And so it's been impactful on my life by enabling me to be able to say that I'm doing something that's actually making a difference. As well as on other competitions, Moon Riders really makes us work as a team and is really kind of instrumental in helping us realize that what we're doing is something special and we should be proud of it as a team. This once in a lifetime opportunity for high school students to send an experiment to the surface of the moon is something that they are proud of. Countdown to liftoff in 2016. This is Tabitha Gray Stroud from Kiake High School for Hikino. Hikino is now on Instagram. For show updates and a peek behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram at Hikino Can Do. We're back on Island School's tour of Kauai's Mokus. 
We're here standing in front of the Kilauea Lighthouse in the Moku of Ko'olau. Ko'olau starts in the town of Anahola and ends where Kalihiwa and Princeville meet. Ko'olau's most famous landmark is Kilauea Lighthouse, a sanctuary for Hawaii's native birds. This moku also has many gorgeous beaches like Rock Quarry and Kalihuai, known for their great surf and beautiful scenery. Our next story takes place at McKinley High School on Oahu, where we meet their cross-country team captain and learn about his story of perseverance. Kitamasa Vincent Mitsui, a senior at McKinley High School, was a boy from Japan and born to run. After moving to Hawaii, Vincent was forced to repeat the ninth grade due to Japan's school year overlapping with Hawaii's. By our OIA rules for athletics, you have four, basically four years to play sports. This deemed him ineligible his senior year to compete in athletics for the Oahu Interscholastic Association. The cross-country season began on September 6th and McKinley was forced to run without their captain, Vincent. When he couldn't run, he was just really sad and down all the time. Like after practice, he would just sit by himself inside and then he wouldn't like talk to anybody. Even though he knew he wasn't eligible to run, he still trained hard with the rest of the team. He motivated other people. I guess it was my teammates. And if I could like help my team out, and if we can like get somewhere with that, I'll, I'll just happy. Mr. Okumura, McKinley's principal, and Mr. Morikuni, McKinley's athletic director, appealed to the Oahu Interscholastic Association, and after a month's wait, the results came in. The principals did pass that appeal. We weren't trying to cheat the system. We just told them the situation. Vincent finally found out he could run the week of divisional championships. Once this decision was made, Vincent was allowed to run his first official race. I was like, finally. It was really exciting because it was my first official race and I was feeling like this was my year. This was a year to aim for Hawaii champs or state championships and in the end we really did. Over the season, Vincent ran a total of six races but only half were officially counted. Improving as the season progressed, Vincent peaked at the most important race, the OIA championship, getting a personal record of 17 minutes and 6 seconds for the three mile race. As a team, McKinley won their first OIA championship in 20 years. It's a hard sport. I mean, it's really hard to keep it up, but if I can do this, then I knew I could do other things and accomplish something much bigger. Vincent plans to run cross-country competitively in college, where hopefully, perseverance will continue to lead him to victory. This is AJ Epstein from President William McKinley High School for Hiki No. We are back on Island School's tour of Kauai's Mokus in the Moku of Kona at Waimea Canyon, also known as the Grand Canyon of the Pacific. The Kona Moku covers the area between Waimea Town and Mahalapu Beach. It also includes the mountain ranges of Kokei and Kahili. Kokei State Park is one of the largest sanctuaries for native species in the state. The biggest tourist attractions of this Moku are Old Kaloa Town, Poipu Beach Park, and the majestic Waimea Canyon. Our next story takes place on Kauai, where students from Chiefest Kamakahela Middle School visit a popular art, music, and food festival in Kauai's biggest little town. On the west side of Kauai is Kauai's biggest little town, Hanapepe. On Friday nights, Hanapepe hosts a special event where food vendors come, businesses open late, and many people come to enjoy. Um, for the food. Okay. You know, try different foods like this new hot dog guy. Every Friday night I come down here to set up uh, with my little heart, hot dog cart and sell my hot dogs. Um, and I actually really like it because I get the chance to talk with people around here uh, that live here full time and also the visitors. And uh, that's something I really enjoy because I get to meet a lot of other people. Hana Pepe Friday Nights is an event that draws hundreds of people who come to experience of what the town has to offer and to meet new people. It's a lot of fun because you meet people from all over the United States and Canada and other parts of the world also. So meeting the people and the fun that goes on here, everybody's happy just milling around. It's just fun to wander around and see new things and talk to people. In addition to meeting people from around the world, people enjoy this event in various ways. What I really love are the stores. The stores are great, but what's really fun is everybody who spills out of the stores and the people making the jewelry or the food and the people playing music and the fact that there's so many people walking through the streets, it just feels like this is what old Kauai was all about. Um, well, as a visitor, uh, it's really nice to see some of the local arts and um, people who live here actually bringing their products to market, so it's nicer to 
get souvenirs or gifts here than just commercial locations. Get to meet the, the people actually making the gifts. Just like all the good things, Haunted Paper Friday Nights have expanded from once only being an art night to now a place for the people of Kauai to come and share their talents. With a wide array of shops to enjoy on Friday nights, it is easy for locals and visitors to come back. Some say they come back. To have that same feeling I have when I come, that it just feels good to be here, but also gifts. When I know I need something, I'll just think, oh, I'll come Friday night. It's a perfect way to end the week. A diverse array of businesses and vendors, with a diverse array of people enjoying them, has made Hana Pepe Friday nights not only a big success, but it's to show everybody what the people of Kauai can do. This has been Callan Wachi from Chief Kamakahela Middle School for Hikino. We're back on Island School's tour of Kauai's Moku. We're here overlooking Hanalei Bay in the Moku of Halalea. Halalea, meaning House of Happiness, stretches from the town of Princeville to the shores of Ke'e. This district encompasses most of Kauai's North Shore and includes towns such as Hanalei, with its historic pier, a timeless beauty attracting tourists from around the globe. Wainiha, a small town hiding pristine beaches, and Haena, the end of the road, where lush tropical jungle meets white sandy beaches. All of which are known for their great popularity, whether it be among tourists drawn to the breathtaking scenery or locals looking for some good waves. Next, the students of Wheeler Middle School on Oahu show us how to be safe on the internet by using proper social media etiquette. Kids being bullied on social media is a growing problem. Recently, a teacher at Wheeler Middle School gave us some tips to prevent cyberbullying. Number one, ask a person's permission before you go and post a picture of them online. Think of the golden rule and treat people like you'd like to be treated. Number two, ask yourself, is this going to get anyone in trouble? You do not want to ruin the chances of them getting a job or going to college. Number three, think of someone you respect and ask yourself, how would they feel if they saw this photo? As Common Sense Media says, if it would make your grandma blush, don't post it, delete it, and never speak of it again. Number four, make sure you know who's going to be seeing the photo and make sure your privacy settings are on. You could accidentally be letting out private information if you and your friends follow these tips, then we're positive you'll be keeping everyone safe, okay. happy, Ready? and drama-free. Okay. Okay. We are back at Island School, which is centrally located in the Puna Moku on the east side of Kauai. This district stretches from Kealia to Haiku, which is more commonly known as Lihui. Kealia is located just north of Kapa'a Town. This beach is popular for its waves and fishing. Wailua was the government and religious center of the Kauai Kingdom for centuries. The Puna Moku is Kauai's most populated and houses all of its major government facilities. We now take you to Maui, where the students from Kamehameha School's Maui Middle meet a husband and wife who found a new life as dragon fruit farmers. Once you become a farmer, a farmer is for life. Crystal Schmidt thought that her college education would prepare her for a career in engineering but little did she know her real learning would happen in a field. So we all met in University of Hawaii at the Manoa, where me and my husband graduated with a master's degree in mechanical engineering. Crystal and her husband Lawrence lived and worked on Maui at the time her mother was in China. My mom has been diabetic for 40 years. She pretty much lost off all of her eyesight to diabetes. Crystal's mom believed in the power of traditional Chinese medicines made with natural herbs and fruits like dragon fruit. Dragon fruit controls diabetes very, very effectively. But there was just one problem. There was no supply of dragon fruit for her mother on Maui. Crystal's mom remained in China and researched dragon fruit farming. A Couple months later, she called me, she said, Crystal, I learned how to grow dragon fruit. I really think we can do it on Maui. Unfortunately, I'm not a farmer. I'm a mechanical engineer. I'm not going to know how to grow a fruit. After 15 years of being mechanical engineers and also a career in accounting, Crystal and her husband decided to put that all behind them, choosing to become full organic farmers to satisfy her mother's desire to bring dragon fruit to Maui. I mean, the Hawaiians, the Hawaiians themselves, they're, they're sustainable. They feed themselves. 
We have the off of our hour. We have all the system. We can feed ourselves. I don't know why we don't do this anymore. Think about it. The Hawaiians, they survived without any plants coming and bring them food. Because dragon fruit is seasonal, Crystal and her husband decided to farm other crops such as baby lettuce, pineapple, papaya, and banana, just to name a few. The best career you could pursue is to be a productive farmer in Hawaii. Although farming became her livelihood and what she says is the best thing that has happened to her, it doesn't come without its share of problems. Actually, the biggest challenge is the weather. It's the unpredictability. And uh, that's the two major things. You cannot control the weather. Two days before Christmas, we'll have a huge storm. Christmas Day come, I have absolutely no lettuce. Despite the problems which are an everyday risk associated with farming, Crystal feels that she definitely has made the right career choice. Oh, so I'm so happy. I said I'm so happy to be a farmer, not a, not a mechanical engineer. I'm having a better life, more meaningful life, fulfilling, happy, productive. What else do you want? And healthy. Crystal has one word of advice for the youth of today. If you know what you want and you really work hard and you have faith, good things are eventually going to happen. Life doesn't always go as planned, and sometimes you go into a different field of work. In Crystal Schmidt's case, she literally grew into her career. This is Liana Kanimitsu from Kamehameha Maui for Hikino. We are here on Island School's tour of Kauai in the Moku of Nepali. This Moku spans the entirety of the Nepali coast and rises nearly 4,000 feet to connect with Kokea State Park. The cliffs are home to many indigenous species of plants and animals and provide recreational activities for the island most notably the hiking of the Kalalau Trail. The pristine waters are home to humpback whales on their annual migration to Hawaii and play host to kayakers and swimmers during the summer. The term hacker is more widely known as someone who infiltrates a computer system. The students of Iolani School on Oahu introduce us to a more positive form of hacking. After school, nights, and weekends, a group of students who call themselves the Iolani Hackers spend their time planning elaborate pranks that are meant to delight people rather than trick them. It's kind of based off the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. They, a lot of the students would just pull hacks on it, so they would do these crazy outrageous pranks overnight anonymously, and it's actually really encouraged over there, so people you know, have a laugh and stuff, and it just makes people's day. So we based all of these pranks, and we called them hacks because we wanted to make people smile and have just kind of like something small um, to just brighten their day. Other students naturally gravitated to the group. Faculty members joined too. They work in the Sullivan Center Fab Lab to create their designs in secret. They chose the name Iolani Hackers using the definition of hacker that means to create or alter things to make a practical joke or something really cool. So the main objective of hackers is to create fun, meaningful experiences um, in the elevator, in a place where you normally wouldn't expect it. Um, Part of that is, a large part of that, is design and the whole, the whole word, the whole definition of design. Uh, meaning that at the end of the day, these hacks have to be fun, they have to be enjoyable, and they have to be safe. Um, it has to work as well as look good. I think we're called the hackers because basically throughout the year, we go around and do random hacks to the school, um, put different things up that weren't there before. Students can use laser cutters, 3D printers, soldering irons, and all kinds of tools in the fab lab to support their creativity. But they haven't forgotten the utility of simple tools like pliers, hammers, and drills. Iolani teachers Martin M.D. and Taylor Wong are also members of the Hackers. They provide both guidance and encouragement in an effort to foster creativity. Now whenever we have an installation, we usually meet a month in advance or a month and a half in advance and we're just brainstorming ideas, you know, bouncing back and forth. So we say, okay, let's do this and this and this and then figure out later how to do it because that's when you, you know, you realize that you don't want to put any limits to what you can do. The Iolani hackers never announce when they have a new hack. They like the element of surprise. The hackers dedicated the elevator late last school year to the senior class of 2014. Using images of their high school memories, the hackers created a tear-inducing montage. Julia Page vividly remembers seeing their reactions. I was sitting in the fab lab and you know there's a there's the glass windows you can pretty much see everyone that goes into the elevator. And I was sitting there with Mr. Wong and a bunch of senior girls went in. They were like 
10 of them, they all piled in. The doors closed, and when they opened, they were all sobbing. And I didn't really know how to take that. I'm like, oh no, I'm sorry, I've made you cry. But it was just so powerful to see that something that we did had that kind of reaction to people. Um, so that was, that probably struck me the most. When they see things that are random hacks and they get all excited, it makes me happy knowing that I got to be a part of that. Every day, the Iolani hackers are finding innovative ways to surprise the students and faculty. This is Riley Sakamoto from Iolani School for Hikino. We are back on the Island School tour of Kauai's Mokus. We are currently in Kokei, looking at the Moku of Niihau. Niihau, or the Forbidden Isle, is the westernmost inhabited island in the state of Hawaii, located 18 miles west of Kauai. Niihau is a private island purchased by the Robinson family in 1864. Only people native to Niihau may live on the island. Non-residents are not allowed on the island unless invited by a Niihau resident. At this time, 130 native Hawaiian-speaking residents reside on the island, living solely off the land. The students of St. Francis School on Oahu introduce us to a young woman who continues to aim for the top, despite her medical condition. At St. Francis School shooting range, it's just another day at practice for the air riflery team. But for Isabel Villanueva, it's another day of aiming for the top. I have been shooting for about four years now. I started off um, my first year as a freshman. It's not just picking up a gun and pulling the trigger. There is a lot of time and effort that you have to put in to the sport in order to better yourself as a shooter. In addition to learning air riflery, Isabel has a rare and dehabilitating condition that affects her skin, bones, and muscles. I was diagnosed with linear scleroderma at the age of 10. I was about maybe in fifth grade. I wouldn't say that my diagnosis affects my ability to shoot since I've endured my um, diagnosis for a very long time. I have gained a tolerance for it. The, the shooting position that we shoot in puts a lot of strain on her joints. Uh, the, the linear scleroderma affects her joints. So she, she shoots in pain, but unlike many of the other kids that are on our team, she doesn't complain about the pain. She just needs to take a break. She stops, makes her rifle safe, comes off the line, stretches out her joints, then goes back to shoot. She doesn't complain about it. And you know, be, maybe it's because that she's lived with that her whole life that she just accepts it as part of what, what life is. And that's, maybe that's what makes her tougher. I would say that my medical condition strengthens me because I do not allow my diagnosis to define who I am. An accredited sport recognized by the Hawaii High School Athletic Association, known as the HHSAA, air riflery continues to be a top priority for Isabel as she aspires to shoot at the collegiate level in national competitions. And that time and dedication paid off for Isabel when she became state champion in 2014. I would say becoming state champion was a dream come true because I've put so much time and effort into the sport itself and it was worth all the time and effort. To say it was emotional <laughs> was, was probably an understatement because uh, it was a four-year journey. It was a four-year journey from starting the program at St. Francis to culminating at the end of four years where we had a state champion. My advice would be to continue the sport. You meet many amazing people and it is just such a great community to be surrounded by. Isabel Villanueva feels at home on the shooting range and that passion shows through her achievements and her resilience. She is currently shooting in the precision air riflery season and hopes to take her passion of air riflery to the collegiate level. This is Kami Yamamoto from St. Francis School for Hikino. Well, we've come to the end of this episode of Hikino. Remember, all of these stories were written, shot, and edited by students like us. We hope you've enjoyed watching them as much as we've enjoyed sharing them with you. Make sure to tune in to next week's episode for more proof that Hawaii students Hikino can do.
Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.